Hello and welcome back. This is Overlord Bo. Today I'll be covering the upcoming Tier 9 Japanese Pirate Cruiser, the Chikuma 2. Now, the Chikuma 2 is going to be the first Tier 9 hybrid being introduced into World of Warships. So let's get started on a few ship stats. Uh, and then we'll talk about the how to obtain her. Uh, for the HP, we have 38,900 HP, which is pretty low for a Tier 9 cruiser. You do have a 27 millimeter deck armor, which can bounce uh, 380 millimeter guns, but not much else. You do have, unfortunately, a above water citadel Ooh, and a really weak broadside, as you saw there. So, uh, yeah, you don't want to be broadside or a cruiser or a battleship alike because you'll take a lot of damage. Overall, I'd say the hull is very fragile. You're effectively a tier 9 with a tier 8 cruiser survivability. So make sure if you do get her, you use the smokes that are provided with this ship. Because uh, if you don't, you're going to be squashed really quick. Because a lot of the time you want to be in a cutting position when you're using this. So as you can see right here, easily cit citadel bolt from the rear. So you definitely need to be careful of that. Moving on from the hole, let's talk about how you can get yourself the Shikuma 2. Now, the Shikuma is available through the Golden Week event as part of the Wishing Wharf section in the Armory. Now, think of the Wishing Wharf as a fantasy lottery that will always drop economic rewards, a camo, or even a ship. While you can earn free tokens, players have the options of buying tokens to increase their odds of winning. Uh, players have a 1.8% chance of winning a ship from the group that includes the Tier 7 Maya, the Tier 7 Hayuga, the Tier 10 Hayate, which is by far the best, and of course the Shikuma herself. Now you do get a pity drop guaranteed a ship after 90 tries. In addition, there is a 0.01% chance, 1 in 10,000 chance, of winning a gold version of the Shikuma, which looks amazing. Uh, through the whales are guaranteed to earn her after 500 tries as well. Now this will be starting in the 13.3 patch update. I'm not exactly sure exactly when it will be going on, but I saw it be going on through then. Now let's talk about some of the base statistics of the ship. For the guns, you have eight uh, gate guns with DD dispersion, uh, hard hitting with good accuracy you do have low dpm on par with about tier 7 heavy cruisers a slow reload of 16 seconds which is incredibly slow for a tier 9 cruiser now notably you do have very good forward firing angles but mediocre when kiting which really sucks and you can't fire directly to the rear. So pretty much if you're running away, you always have to be at some kind of angle, which makes it where overall you have a very mediocre firepower. It's pretty much saved by the fact that she can farm some smoke. If you didn't have smoke in this thing, yeah, you would just be absolutely toast. So luckily, you got smoke to be able to save you in that regard. For torpedoes, you have a 15 kilometer range that do 24,000 damage in 105 second reload. You do have six torpedo, six torpedoes per side of a total of 12. Uh, you, it's an, you have an amazing amount of torpedoes for a tier nine. It's pretty much on par with the best torpedo boats, uh, torpedo boat DDs for the tier, which is just incredible. You have, you have very good torpedo angles on this thing. But launching from stealth to make sure you don't get dust struck when torping. Yeah, pretty much the guns on this thing, overall, I can just say they aren't the best. But the torpedoes are definitely what makes this, makes this thing stand out. Pretty much from the tier 8 hybrid, it's pretty much the same kind of play style. So if you have the Japanese tier 8 hybrid, this thing is pretty much the exact same thing. Where you're able to... Pretty much kite away, use your torpedoes, use your aircraft to do extra damage. It does amazingly well. Now for anti-air, it's just dog shit. There's no easy way of putting it. The anti-air is absolutely horrid. 
So if you have a CV going after you, uh, good luck. That's all I can say about it. You do have a standard seven kilometer range for your ASW, which sucks because you have to get really close, unfortunately, to the story to be able to do it. Because if you're doing with tier 10 subs, good luck trying to deal with them with how fast they are. But if you're doing with a tier 8 submarine, you'll definitely do a lot better off in comparison to dealing with the tier 10. So just pray if you're dealing with any subs at all, you're dealing with the tier 8s and not the tier 10s. For maneuverability, you go 35.5 knots, which is very fast. It's only behind the speed boost cruisers for the tier. You also have an amazing turning uh, radius. Just overall, maneuverability is just top tier on this thing. It is incredible. If you do have to open water, at least you're very mobile in this ship. So you're able to dodge and weave and maneuver, wiggle around, make sure you don't get hit. That plus the smoke screen, the fact you have a 6.8 kilometer smoke fire and pounding with these guns, because they're 200 millimeter. Yeah, 200 millimeter guns. Yeah, 200 millimeters. It's around that or like, I think they're 203, 206 is right around there. That having a 6.8 kilometer smoke fire and concealment is amazing for being able to farm in smoke or to be able to just run away from a situation. Now for concealment, you do have a 9.5 kilometer best surface concealment, which is amazing for a heavy cruiser. Definitely makes you super comfortable when you're able to launch torpedoes from that close because you're more likely to be able to hit your torpedoes. And you can also just comfortably fire your guns in the, sm in the smoke. And you can also comfortably fire torpedoes from stealth. You don't. Now the best part of this ship is by far the hybrid ability um the fact that um you have pretty much how this thing works you get you're able to actually charge up your planes as in it's not just one charge you can have up to two charges of the planes so you can use plane you can use one plane then you'll have another one right after but it does take time of course to reload you have it takes 120 seconds to regen both of them Pretty much per charge, you get two planes and you get one torpedo per per plane, pretty much. These torpedoes are pretty much Harkuryu level torpedo bombers. They do, they really pack a punch. Now, these planes are pretty slow at 135 knots for the, the cruiser speed, but when they first launch, they get the uh, rocket booster push when they first start. So if you're within about nine if you're within 10 or 11 kilometers of a enemy ship you're able to pretty much speed boost all the way up to next to them and pretty much be able to hit them really quick now a good combo that i've done with this thing is where if you're in a kiting position or if you're bow into a target like kiting behind them you use smoke to be able to start a fire on their ship if they dcp you then just hit them with these torpedoes to try to get a flood on them or you can do it the other way around where if you're cutting away you can use the torpedoes that are on the ship launch those and then you can use the planes to force the ship to turn a certain way to hit those torpedoes that are coming at them and once they dcp you can smoke up and start farming them with the with the he to be able to get permafires and start flooding the actual living hell out of them and you will just devastate the poor targets you're going after. It can definitely be a, a lot of fun for you, but very painful for the enemy team. For consumables, you get the normal cruiser DCP. You do start off with one extra heal, which is pretty nice. And you have a choice between a standard Hydro or a DFA. Of course, I'm going to say go with Hydro. It's not really worth to go DFAA. It's better just to go with Hydro. Let's just talk about overall. I would say the Shikuma is a very interesting tier 9 hybrid cruiser. Uh, you definitely specialize more in the torpedo attacks from both the air and the sea. The most notable gimmick is her beefed up torpedo bombers. Essentially a tactical version of the Herkuria's deadly torpedoes. Now they'll definitely wreak havoc on anything they hit and are tanky enough to spot DDs for a while until that whole 
spotting thing comes in because I know that in this particular patch they're going to be starting closed testing for the new CV spotting mechanic or whatever they're like they're changing the whole thing for it uh her ship torpedoes are definitely no slouch either having the same 15 kilometer range as the Akashi but having slightly better stats um good players can use the planes to steer enemy ships into your surface torpedoes which I was just suggesting pretty much you don't use the the planes themselves to actually hit the ship you're doing it more as in to force the enemy to turn to hit your surface torpedoes or to distract them because even I have this tendency where I'd rather not give a CV a single ounce of damage so I'll legit give broadside to a whole team not to give it damage but definitely can cost you your life in this game now you do want to be careful though when using the planes uh Shikuma is very fragile uh, even with the extra heal, so definitely use your concealment and the smoke to your advantage. I have had a lot of instances when I played this ship and I would just get spot even for a little bit. I would get absolutely dev struck by enemy battleships. This thing is not meant to get spotted. If you get spotted in this thing, you need to smoke up, go dark, do whatever you need to do. Do not stay spotted in this thing. This thing, you will get absolutely destroyed really quick also with the smoke it is also very nice for farming damage with the guns but again you have a 16 second reload on your guns so your dpm leaves literally dog shit your dpm is terrible so you're relying more on just starting fires and you're actually farming someone out it's still very useful but probably more so to hide your ship as opposed to damage farming but don't sit too long or you'll get torped in smoke like we've seen in so many cases overall i would say the shikuma 2 is like a pretty average skill floor level or and you definitely have a very high skill ceiling for the ship she isn't super hard to play as you can just spam torpedoes or hide in smoke when farming but veterans trying to min max her definitely find it difficult to juggle her planes launching torpedoes and attacking with the guns she can be fun and certainly has a unique style of play but can also be very demanding if the player prefers a ship with a simpler or easier play style so pretty much if you're looking for a simple cruiser to play this is not the ship for you there's also a lot of easier tier 9 premium cruisers out there. You have the Dalian, the Agir, the Azuma. They're all tier 9 cruisers you can get. There's also some other cold ship options as well that are easier cruisers to play. But if you're looking for a hybrid tier 9 cruiser with the torpedo bombers, the great ship torpedoes, and the the, the smoke as well, then I think that you get, you'll like the Shikuma too. If that's what you're if that's what you're particularly looking for i think you'll like this ship if you don't want a tier 9 version you can always get the tone as well the tone does perfectly well at tier 8 but if you've already listened to the video this far and you're kind of on the fence i would say maybe wait to get the ship until it's out of the gambling event itself because usually sooner or later they'll have it where you can buy just buy the ship itself or they'll be in some other kind of event where you can get it where you just buy it or something then i would definitely say get it then if you're more on the fence if you want it right away then go for it good luck in getting it that's all i can say there now let's talk about a little bit of history of the shikuma so the shikuma was the second of the tone class cruisers launched in 1938 uh, it's definitely unusual for a heavy cruiser having all four tourists placed in the front it'll, to allow her to mount a hangar for seaplanes on her stern. Like other Japanese ships, the Shikuma would participate in many battles throughout the war, including a Java Sea, Midway, and the Solomon Islands. Now, ultimately, she would be lost during the battle off some samar in 1944 when chasing down the u.s escort carriers after helping to sink uh gambier uh to sink gambier bay shikuma got demolished by the dd escort samuel b roberts and later finished off by torpedo bombers from the escort cvs 
So at the end of the video, I'll talk about the build, but let's just recap. So overall, the Shikuma is overall a pretty fragile cruiser with effectively tier 8 cruiser survivability. The eight guns that you have are very accurate, but they're overall mediocre firepower. It's definitely only really used to far use them to farm and smoke. Open watering is pretty dangerous with them, but you are able to do it if you're pretty smart with being able to dodge shots. For torpedoes, you have amazing torpedoes. Uh, six per side, total of 12 with the 15 kilometer range. Uh, you do have also amazing fire angles on this ship and you can also do very good stealth torpedoes on this ship with the 9.5 kilometer surface concealment you have is pretty good, which is very good for a heavy cruiser at tier 9 it's amazing for anti-air it's really bad typical japanese anti-air it's what it's what you expect from a japanese ship very bad anti-air for ASW, you have the standard 7 kilometer range. For a tier 9 cruiser, it is pretty rough, but it's better than having surface depth charges, so take it as it is. For maneuverability, you have the high base speed of 35.5 knots. Very good turning radius. Overall, very maneuverable tier 9 cruiser. You get the normal cruiser DCP. You get the extra heel. The standard Hydro or DFA, which again, I said earlier, you would pick Hydro. And pretty much you get the Herkuria Torpedo Bombers, but that are slower. High base damage. And again, you get the two charges of the planes you can charge up. You can use the one over and over again. Or you can save up and get two charges of the planes where you can launch one, then one right after that one's destroyed. So very important here because normally on hybrids you only get one set of planes at a time but on this one you can get two sets now you can't use the two sets at the same time i want to make that very clear you can't you can only use one at a time so you can use the one it gets destroyed or you have to and then you, or you use the other one i just wanted to make that very clear so people didn't get confused there again you can get the shikamu 2 uh is available through the golden week event as part of the wishing wharf section of the armory uh, you can get earn tokens for free, of course, or you can play it, pay money to buy tokens to increase their odds of quitting. If you have a 1.8% chance of winning a ship from the group that's included, the Tier 7 Maya, the Tier 7 Hayuga, the Tier 10 Hayate, and of course the ship itself. And if you have over 90 tries, you get a pity ship drop for, you know, free at that point, so take it as that. And there is also a 1 in 10,000 chance of you winning a gold version of the Shikuma, and you have a guaranteed drop of that, and you have over 500 tries, which I have no idea how expensive that's gonna be. I just know that you have 500 tries, you get yourself a gold version of the Shikuma too, which it does look very cool, by the way, but again, we'll just see whenever, you know, we'll see, we'll probably see a few people running around with it, and you'll they'll definitely stand out, that's for sure. Those camels will definitely stand out. They do look amazingly well. If you enjoy the play style of the tone, the tier eight hybrid of the Japanese, then you'll like the play style of the Shikuma too. They're pretty much identical besides the fact the tone doesn't have smoke while the Shikuma does. So you're able to do a little bit more diverse gameplay with this ship than compared with the Shikuma. But anyway, let's hop over and look at the build that I have suggested. All right, so let's look at the build for the Shikuma 2. So the Shikuma build, I go with main armament for the first slot for the Hydro. Second slot, I go with engine protection. So this thing is going to be easily Citadel. So you definitely want to have that there to help protect your engine. Next slot, I would do Torpedo 2's protection since you're wanting to build more torpedoes. Since torpedoes on this thing are so amazing. Then you want to do propulsion, or you can do searing gears, up to you. Then you do concealment, and then you do a reload for the guns. You already have a range of 15.7 kilometers. You really don't want to do long distances thing, because you're trying to do more stealth with the guns uh, in smoke, or you're trying to rely more on the torpedoes, so I wouldn't really recommend that. 
Now, since this thing is a test ship, I could only show the build with the 19 point commander, but you would take survivability expert here uh, for our 21 point build. So what I would do first is you do grease the gears first, then you would do fill the tubes, then you would do survivability expert, then concealment, then RPF, then adrenaline rush, then pack a punch, and that would be your 21 point commander build. Oh, and sorry, and then the consumable specialist, and that would be your 21 point commander build. Now, you're asking why you don't take superintendent. The thing is, you already get an extra heal on this ship, so you really don't need an extra consumable. But if you want to get superintendent, you're more than welcome to uh, switch. Um, you can switch the RPF off to get the superintendent instead. But it's more up to you on that one because you do get an extra smoke with that, which is really nice and an extra hydro. But this is just the build I'd recommend. But anyway, uh, this is Overlord Bo. If you have any questions or concerns, tell them in the comments down below. But thank you all for watching and I will talk to you all later.